on this episode. Goats, goats, and more goats. All right, I get it. They're cute. And how being faithful over just a few things helped one happy hippie milk her way into an empire. For 27 years, you talk the talk. Goats! Now you're walking the wall. You got both hands on that udder. Cheese! Doug is back on the shoot, by the way. Those of you that watched my last gig will remember a tall, pasty, albino gent, somewhat dour. But he's the kind of guy who'll say, yeah, it's 5.30 in the morning behind the scenes, but light it like it's noon. And if I give him any crap at all, he'll go, fine, fine, then nobody will see you, fine, I hope you're happy. And he'll mope for about three hours. We're here. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. The crack of dawn is still an hour away, and Doug, my dedicated cameraman, is filming with both eyes closed. The rest of these people are shrouded in mystery. I can't see anything. Hey, and Mike, this hey. is our founder, Mary. Hey, hey, how are you? Thank it's you. good to meet you. Me too. Thank you for having us out here at. <laughs> 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 Turn towards me. Oh. So everybody's getting coveralls, huh? You got it. Oh yeah. <laughs> So then we are officially beginning. Our official beginning starts right now. This is right where it starts. We are, yeah. So this is it. This is it. That's where are we? We are at Cypress Grove Dairy. Give me just an outline of the day. What, what am I going to see, and what do you think we're going to learn, and what can so I do? So we're going to see what a modern dairy goat farm is about, you know, as opposed to the kind that I had when I first started, which was duct tape and bailing, <laughs> and bailing twine, twine and, you know, 50 goats. Right. So we're going to see 500 goats. You have 500 goats? Yep. Now, as beginnings go, how do you think it's going so far? With you and me? Yeah. Great. Okay. I'm going to continue to talk to you until I'm convinced that I have the measure of the woman. <laughs> okay, we're off. Good? You, you have no idea how true that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, poor goaties. Hey, Sonny. Really, nobody in the U.S. is doing dairy goats very well. And so it's our goal with this dairy to have open book models so people can see and be successful. Right. So kind of a cool thing is bedding. Yeah. So we use, like in a lot of dairies, they use straw, but we use rice hulls and almond hulls. It lowers our cost. Right. It's really absorbent. Here's a belief system I have that everybody does something in the, you know, like if you make cheese, it has to be pretty good or you're out of business, yes. right? So all the things that everybody does in the middle are normal, but all the weird things around the edge are what make you unique and successful or not. So this is just one of many weird things around the edges. I call it things on the margin. I love it. So you've milked goats before? Is that what you said? I did. I remember the smell. It's such a specific smell on your hands. Yeah. It yeah. takes a while to get it off, actually. The smells are all coming back. But the gentle piano music in the background? Um, this is the working end. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> the business end. We like really? them to be happy. Yeah, we always have music on in the mornings. It's kind of an odd juxtaposition of this and beautiful that. piano yeah. and... And goat butt. <laughs> Excuse me. Certainly. What was your name again? My name's Jason. Jason, right. I'm the milker. I milk well, these guy, girls. Yeah? <laughs> He put some gloves on. We can strip some of these goats. If you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. Not? There's some gloves over there by the radio. So, I mean, you can pick out your favorite goat if you want to go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> this, pick this. This, this one's beautiful. What do you like, right? <laughs> you kind of just get, yeah, make, make a balloon and then squeeze everything out of the bottom of the balloon. That's the easiest way I've ever figured to explain it. He's got this. So this goes here. You flip this here. That goes there, that goes there. There you go. Look at that, smoking man. You did one goat. 
You only got 499 left to go. <laughs> awesome. Where are we going from here? Kids. So on a herd this size, a normal farm might lose 10 to 18% of the kids. We lost two. <laughs> this is why we have this company, I'll tell you what, is they're so darn cute you can't get rid of them. Oh, I love them. <laughs> All right, I get uh, it, I get it. it, they're cute, they're cute. They love you. Do they have teeth on the top and the bottom? Just the top. Just the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're sharp though. Yeah, they and, and they're hungry. It's, it's chow time. Looking right into my soul. <laughs> Up here, over about 33 acres of Humboldt County, California, Mary Keene runs Cypress Grove Chev, and they make what some people consider to be the best goat cheese in the world, Humboldt Fog. But Mary's overnight success story took 30 years to unfold. So I got my first goat. I lived. Um, next door to a cow dairy in Sonoma. Yeah. And they had goats for brush control. So they have cows and the goats are running wild. So my first daughter, I wanted the best milk for her. I asked the woman, could I buy a goat? And she says, honey, if you can catch one, you can have it. <laughs> you can catch me, you can She's have really me. She's a cool woman. So I sat out there with grain and enticed these goats every day to get a little closer and a little closer. And I grabbed Hazel and Esmeralda were my first two goats in San Diego. That's why this happened? Wait a minute, so what year is it? <laughs> this is 1971. Gosh, so you're a young girl. Well, you're, you're I had my first, pup. I'm a baby, yeah. Then I bought a really good buck, moved up to Humboldt, bred them, and several years go by, pretty soon I've got 10 goats. Right, and, but how uh, are you paying the bills at this point? Um, I had a, we lived on this 80 acres, and had a garden. I made cheese at right. home. You know, you just sell a little firewood, you do a little this and a little that. Yeah. It was that back to the land time. I mean, you know, I was a serious hippie. Yeah. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. You know? But you're doing it basically for yourself and your family. Yeah. I mean, you're no, that was you're totally us. You, yeah. You're not. No, this I wasn't. This is not a capitalistic venture. Oh no, 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 no. I was really down on capitalism at that time. You know. I want to hear the whole story. Where else can we go? Is there anything can else we, we can- Can we go inside and- Is there uh, anything else we can do here? Do you need to- Well, well let's go inside and see what Annie's up to. All right. <laughs> this is the nursery. Hi, Annie. Hi, good morning. Thank you for being on TV with us. Yeah, how are you doing? Hi, good. Annie. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Very good, thanks. Good, I'm Mike. What are we looking at here? All right, we're gonna feed some little babies. Whisk it up and make sure it hasn't settled. At some point I have to ask you an important question, yes. which is when, when did you decide to become a rapacious capitalist? I think it was when the kids needed to go to the dentist. Funny. <laughs> Funny how that works out. Okay, so these guys are going to be very hungry. Yeah. It's all about speed. you got to get the bucket in the ring before they get underneath it. Yeah. you got to get the handle down right. as soon as you can. Handle down. And they'll jump right on. Hello, goats. Could it be in there shooting the other way? Yeah. Can I go in here? Yeah. Oh. yeah. This is what I love about Doug. He'll do whatever I suggest, even when it lands him in a veritable lion's den, or in this case, a pen, surrounded by hungry goats with very sharp upper teeth. No, actually, I think we have a show now. <laughs> Come on, goats. Baby. Come on, goats. <laughs> That's it, Doug. Take one for the team. <laughs> Here, maybe if you go in and show them the bucket, they'll come right back to you. Okay. Here, here if one comes. I heard, yeah, if one comes, I'll come. Hey, look yes. at it. First come, first serve. Okay, just don't let it feed because they're not all there and they'll. Okay, right, 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 right. Come, oh, come on. Come on, goats. That's it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's goats. Goats, goats, goats. Come on, come goats. goats. That's it, Doug. A little help. A little help. <laughs> there we go. Now we're all in. All right. Perfect. All right. But all right. now they're all, all right. in. All right, you the... got to get out of your thing. You got to get out of your thing. Don't want to get a little broken uh, leg. On. We need you out of your thing. We got to get out of the thing. <laughs> They're not out of the thing. They gotta get out of the thing. There we go. They're out of the thing. <laughs> Nipples out. Come on. Oh, oh my God. God. Took some in the eye. Mm. 
piece of cake, not a piece of cheese. <laughs> that doesn't make you hungry. I don't know what will. Look at their tails. It's their tails goats. are going in sync. I know. Little metronomes. Uh, next is the alfalfa. All right. There you go. Can you hear him chewing? That's the best sound. Come on in, Jones. Get it, get it clean and beautiful. We're going to pause right now to bring you the sound of a goat slowly chewing. Listen carefully and enjoy. Hey, uh, do you want to take a quick moment again and uh, explain briefly uh, why it is you made that transition from nurturing, loving Earth Mother to rapacious capitalist? <laughs> Tell me again when it happened. There had to be a moment. There was never a moment. This business just kind of grew. Gradually, I had enough money to live on. Mm -hmm. But then we made more money. And so then there's that decision about what to do. Mary's own special brand of doing business is in the way she supplies the goat milk. And it's not business as usual. So how many farms provide you with milk? We have about seven, I think, right now. Oh, so you don't, you're not dependent only on the milk oh, here. Oh, no, 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 no. So we have, a lot of our farms were cow dairies. Yeah. And since we pay four times as much for the milk, they started switching. So we're getting these small, small cow dairies switching to goats. But they were thinking that goats are small cows and they were failing. Right. Thus, this dairy, so we can show them. That was a really important point. Did you get it? <laughs> I feel the need to sum up, just because yes. I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, it's a big deal. Okay, so this is a big deal. The, the, the cheese that's coming out of Cypress Grove is not being created only by the milk coming from the goats here, but rather by milk coming from goats at half a dozen other farms. Yeah, as far as Oregon and around here. So we, see, this is only three years old. Yeah. And Cypress Grove is 30 years. And we kept trying and trying to educate, but it didn't work because we didn't have street cred. <laughs> I just learned this now, okay. Yeah, it's a big deal. We didn't want to do this, exactly. It's a whole separate business. You may, see, this, is ha this happens all the time. I, it took me five hours, and now, now I see what's happening. <laughs> So imagine 30 years in your head. For 27 of those years, you make Struggling cheese. Struggling for milk. Why? Because people treat goats like cows. Yeah. Why? Because it's what they're used to. Yeah. In America, it's all about cows. It's right. not about goats. But the metrics and the margins are completely different with goats. We said, OK, we're going to build our own dairy. It's going to be an open book system. You can see everything we do, we'll share it. You can walk through, we'll give you breeding stock. We will share a nutritionist with you. We'll share a vet with you. We provide all those services for our dairies so they can be successful. Now this is so weird. It is weird. That's, you turned it upside down. Well, we went full circle. You know what you did? For 27 years, you talked the talk. <laughs> now you're walking the walk. We're milking the milk. You are milking, you, you got both hands on that udder. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. Mary has subsidized the local farms to create a goat-based mini economy around her business. Ah, the wisdom of Solomon. Look at that tree. It's called a big leaf maple. I love that tree. <laughs> a big part of walking the walk is walking in here a brand new state-of-the-art milking parlor with the most up-to-date goat milking technology available. W won't, won't you come into the parlor? Please come into the parlor. We have hors d'oeuvres. Oh, <laughs> I have hors d'oeuvres. So check this puppy out. Wow. It's this is called a pit parlor. As you notice, we're standing here. So the goats would be up here. What's this cost? Well, this whole facility is going to be three and a half million dollars. The whole thing, okay. Yeah. Well, 50-some employees, 500 goats. Yeah. You're making great cheese. You're what contributing. What more do you need? Yeah. You know. I'm happy. Yeah. Once a month, we have an all-staff meeting mm -hmm. where we all sit down and have lunch together. And we made an announcement that we contributed 
to the school lunch program over the summer, and everybody cheered. It's not just at this level, you yeah. know, the business founder. Right. It, everybody cares. And to me, that's what is cool. You're not going to cry, are you? Yeah, I cry all the time. <laughs> yeah, that, I a little bit. Obviously, Mary is invested in her business because her business is personal. Long before she had a three and a half million dollar milking parlor, it was just a way to provide the best milk available for her kids. Her success has allowed her to provide great milk to other people's children. That makes her feel good. Good enough to cry over unspilled milk. I made her cry. I made her cry. Seriously, is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Wait, hang on. Those goats are pretty cute, too. These, also cute. Very cute. These guys, adorable. Oh, those are good, too. Well, you get the point. We have a lot of cute goat footage. We really want to use it. Now on a more important business. And just so we're absolutely clear, that is the big leaf maple tree in question I've been hearing about all day. Teased with brutally, uh, the crew is taking its positions underneath the tree. We're going to sit down, we're going to have some cheese, we're going to take a break. Then we're going to go to the creamery, where I'm guessing we'll have more cheese. And your plate, sir. Mm, thank you. What are we looking at? We've got um, Midnight Moon, mm -hmm. Humboldt Fog, uh -huh. Ms. Natural, mm -hmm. <laughs> Purple Haze. Purple Haze. <laughs> Herbs to Humboldt mm -hmm. and Sergeant Pepper. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. If you don't feed him, he'll totally go, he'll go right off his meds. Falling off, yeah. Total suck. Yeah. Are we going to see this being made over at the yeah. creamery? Yeah. So that's like vegetable ash? Yeah, and vegetable as opposed to volcanic. So it's white pine, so it comes from a tree. Right. Um, well, why does anybody want ash of any origin in their cheese? The pH of the ash is high and the pH of the cheese is low. So it balances out the flavor profile of the cheese so you don't get quite so much of that uh, tang. Mm -hmm. Then it's a visual it too. Looks it looks like a cake. And I think that's, this was one of the first soft ripened goat cheeses in the US. Okay. So it's Our work is done, guys. Put your cameras down. Let's yeah, eat something. Eat. <laughs> mm. Not yeah, you, Marlene. I mean, you keep shooting. You never eat. No cheese for you. That is mean. <laughs> we should see what these guys did to get the job. <laughs> so our plan is now to go to the creamery. Yep, we're gonna hop in the car, go to the creamery. This is your ride. Yeah. Look at you with a Tesla. Oh, I know. We want to turn this into what you call a driving montage. Okay, jump in there. You're really going to let me drive? This is Vista Point, Doug. This is Vista Point, but the exit that we just passed. Why don't we go to the creamery, set the drone up there, and get a shot that gets us arriving? Yes. Love it. Right? Yes. You're welcome, Doug. It's not, I don't like that idea. Isn't it true that the only ideas you actually like are the ones that originate in your pee head? No, not at all. Here's kind of a cool thing. Um, there's the fog. That's the name Humboldt Fog, is the line of blue sky. Doug, did you shoot the fog? Is it Humboldt Fog? No, I think Marlene did that. All right, thanks, Marlene. <laughs> Glad somebody's doing something. Yeah. All right, so what's the plan? So the plan is we're going in the creamery. Yes. Checking out where the milk arrives, mm -hmm. pasteurization, mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of walk you through the flow of cheese making. Fantastic. All right, guys, stay close. This is where the milk comes in. Milk comes in, so it's that's... It's pasteurized. Got it. The milk then turned into this. Magically. Where does it go from here? This is starting right with the curd that we just saw. So there's the layer of ash. Since it's liquid, it, you have to push it hard so it sticks. If it's not perfectly smooth, it will crack. That's the fun part. Next stage is ash on the outside. Isn't that cool? Yeah. 
So the whole thing then is like seven days of At aging. least, a minimum of seven days. Pull up, uh -huh. and then keep it up over the top, and then the fold. This is terrible. <laughs> okay, so you want to label them? Hey, boss. <laughs> One, two, three. Cheese! It's like that's never been done before. Very funny. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have cheeses now to eat and miles to go before I sleep. Or not, I could probably just drink my cider and fall asleep right here under the redwoods. The name of your company, Cypress Grove, which you more or less chose as your name, what, 30 years ago? Well, 30, yeah, 30 something. And then you buy this creamery here in town and you learn what? Well, we bought the creamery nine years ago, uh -huh. bought the property, and we found out after we bought it that in 1915, it was Cypress Grove Creamery. Now, Think how about, cool is that? It, it makes me wonder, again, about that weird nexus of uh, predetermination, fate, destiny, serendipity. And why do we have a cheese called Bermuda Triangle? There you have it. I'm just gonna set this here for you, Pete. Oh. Don't don't run away from it, Pete. Don't run away. I thought that was for Bob. <laughs> you can either eat it, or you can do something really artistic with it, like some sort of rack focusy thing. You know how you guys love mm -hmm. to do that? Do, mm -hmm. do something crazy with that. Okay. I'm gonna get weird. Give me a Humboldt County rack focus. That's it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God, there's something else. Here in Humboldt County, we don't shoot anything completely in focus. <laughs> You want to sit uh, here? Want to yeah, that's this? great. You hear that? Yep. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing. It's good. It works for me. So here's what works for me. These stories, you know, they're never about what they tell me they're going to be about, right? You know, cheese making. That's not what any of this is about. <laughs> yeah. I think this is about being open to possibilities. You know, so... Here I am, a marine biology major, making goat cheese. That's pretty random. You know, you can be headed down this road, but this road presents itself. Yeah, but most people don't take that road. Yeah, well, I do. It's under the surface. It's not about making cheese at all. I mean, I could be doing a lot of different things, but it's about being able to be creative and working with people. And you know, I'm really lucky that it turned out like this. All right, any parting advice for a budding entrepreneur? Just think about what you're doing and does it matter to you? And try not to have big regrets. <laughs> but maybe a couple. <laughs> yeah, you need a few, for sure. Yeah. And cheers. <laughs> and plastic cups. <laughs> It's okay just to leave this here, right? Yeah, that's what we usually do. But it's better if you stomp on it because it'll biodegrade much faster. <laughs>